All right, let's go again. We're getting real close to done. It's a new day. Didn't work on it after that last session. So the painting's been sitting out overnight and um, I'm gonna kind of keep playing with these back trays. I'm just taking a stump here or a tortillion and kind of um, pushing back this bright gold color I put on for the highlight of these trees. So I'm just kind of push those back a little bit. Uh, we'll do that. I was looking at it last night and kind of um, and kind of seeing if I can do some adjustments and I thought that uh, this needed to be pushed back a little. So that's what I'm doing here. And all this does is it kind of dulls that mark, that color a little bit, kind of makes it just a little bit darker. And I felt that it needed that. I felt that it was too strong of a color to come forward. So just a little bit of adjustments here and there. It's good to have fresh eyes on the painting. Um, so you can kind of see this stuff. Because you tend to not see it while you're doing it. You'll, you'll kind of skip over some things and not see it but when you have fresh eyes like the next day you um, helps you um, helps you look at the things that need to be improved upon All right and I think that's I think this will help so just take a stump and kind of go over those marks if you need to change the value of it or you can use a finger that works as well um, I think in this grass area I think I'm gonna do a kind of a loose blend and uh, cut down on the texture a little bit in this field. It's okay for the front part of this field to have that texture, but I think for the backer part, I want to smooth it out and kind of, kind of blend it back away from the land from here, create some distance. So we'll just kind of smooth those out. I'll keep this texture in the front of that. There we go. All right. This is still really wet and movable and soft. So it's nice about oil pastels is you can just leave it alone. You can just walk away from it. There's no palette to clean up. There's no brushes to clean up. You can just literally just walk away and be done. Leave all your stuff out. Come back the next day and just pick up right up again. One of the nice things about this medium is the cleanup is just, for me, it's very easy. The only thing I need to really clean are my hands and um, the sticks. But uh, there's no brush to clean up. There's no palette to clean up. There's no waste water or, or you know, solvent or anything. It's just a little bit that I use, but the cleanup is so easy. Okay. <clears throat> So kind of playing around with those values. Let's bring back this middle green. And it's just called green, but it's the middle neutral, neutral value of green. Doesn't really lean warm. Doesn't really lean cool. It kind of sits right in the middle. And I'm just gonna go back over this area and just drop a little bit more. And the surface is really slick. It's hard to get that color to really sit on top as I have an already very slick, wet, waxy surface from that Prussian blue I laid down. But every little pass will drop just a little bit more color down onto it. <clears throat> so, all right, and then um, let's see, we're gonna go back to this 
olive green and I'm going to go back over some of these trees. bring some more of this olive green color into it. Okay. And then if I need to highlight I need a strong highlight. We can use uh, maybe this lighter green I was using this field. Maybe just a couple marks, a little bit of highlight here. And if I get too strong of a mark like that one, I can always just take a stump or a finger and kind of push that in, push it back. See, it's really slick up there, really hard to get the color to sit down. So it's kind of like you have to find a um, clean part of the stick, and if you need to wipe it with a disinfectant wipe or even a towel, a paper towel, just to clean it off, just so you can get a bare section here where you can push down and get some more color onto it. So it feels a little gooey, a little sticky on the surface. So this is where you have that problem with oil pastels when you're trying to get additional layers down. If, beca if this became a real problem, then what I would probably do here is put a workable fixative on this, let that sit dry for a good hour or so, and then try to come back and get some more layers. But I don't think I'm going to need it. I'm able to really, if I push hard enough, I'm able to get some color to sit down. Right, I'm bringing some highlights, some some sun that's hitting these back trees. Okay, just um, a highlight there. Just a little bit more sun, a little bit more light by doing this. All right. And these trees, I'm going to bring in a darker grandma. Now, this is called the grandma, grandmother green, deep grandmother green. I really like the name of that. I wonder if there's a grandpa gray. They should have a grandpa gray. If they have a grandmother green, they should have a grandpa gray. So we'll use the grandmother green here on this tree to try to just separate it from the rest of these trees. All right, bring it a little bit darker, different contrasts. Okay, there's a tree trunk that comes up right here. And you see one back in there, and one there, and one there. Okay. And then right here where's shadows 
some light coming through. All right. <clears throat> There's a trees. There's that Prussian blue. All right, let's um, raise this. I'm gonna work on the water again. So one thing I'm, I'm noticing about these rocks is they look like they're floating on the water rather than sitting in the water. So I, I need them to sit. And so I need to kind of rework them here a little bit. So I'm going to grab some of these rock colors here that I was using, All right? Some of these grays and browns, and um, we're going to try to sit these uh, rocks down into the water. So we have a rock here. I need to put a reflection of that rock in the water. Okay, so each rock should have some sort of a reflection of it right in front of it. Just a simple little thing of color right in front of the rock. All right. And then we can add a dark. Some of these are highlighted. The reflection is a little highlighted. Okay. And then a little black to maybe cast a shadow from the sun. is a little better it seems to read a little better maybe a little blue watermark And then um, I'm going to add a little bit more reflection of this little group of trees into here. So let's bring out um, maybe a darker green, that grandmother green, and see if we can try to match that reflection just a little bit closer. Not going for exact mirror-like um, reflection. I like a little bit of movement there in the water. So it's kind of these dashes of color here. We'll spread those out. All right. Darker as we get to the shore. And uh, if we use this brown on top of that green, we can get a darker color of water. Certain parts, I just want to be darker. All 
I put a lot of work into the water. I, there's a lot of colors, a lot of layers to it. Um, really just trying to get a realistic look of water. And so I tend to put a lot of layers into it. But water's fun to make. It's um, a challenge and, and also very fun to recreate. And it's just a various you know, blues and greens and some browns and you got to have that sky reflection and you got to have things that are re reflected in the water from the things that are on the land. So you just kind of go through it. <clears throat> and um, and here I'm just making it a little bit darker. Okay. And then of course, also the, the main important thing is just to make these horizontal motions when you're turn, when you're blending out or when you're spreading out that color. You really want the water to sit very level, very flat. You don't want it to rise, bump, be slanted or tilted in a certain way. So it's very important. Most important is just to get that motion right. This horizontal flat kind of blend. And um, your eye and your mind will do the rest. It'll, it'll pull it all together. Oop, I dropped something. Okay, just dropped one of my pastels. Right, so you get water, it's really up to your interpretation as far as what kind of greens you're gonna put into it, how much layers you're gonna put into it. That's really up to you. You can see the way I'm doing it, but you can see I add a lot to the water. So it's really up to you how you want it to look. I guess the important thing is just to keep that thing, to keep it flat, to try to keep your reflections true and, and believable. So I'm going to bring down this tree here. All right. And also remember, see I have this grassy feel. Well, I need to reflect that also in the water. So we'll put a little green right there. And this tree also will have a reflection, but the problem I'm having with this is I'm not able to get a layer, really a good layer down. So I have to really push and kind of like, there we go, kind of drop a strong color there. All right, we're just taking the same green that it came up here and I'm just pushing it where I think the reflection would show up in the water. Okay. I'm not going for mirror like, right? It would look a lot different, more like an impression. Oops, didn't want to do that. So play around with that. If you do a little uh, brown into it and then smear it, you can almost get the sensation of some under, under the water kind of rocks that are starting to show like the underneath part of the, this river. You can kind of see that, help to pick that with a little brown in there and kind of smear it.
There goes my stump. Flying away. Let's use this one. All right, and so where the water starts to meet this little rocky shore, I add a little water line, just real loose. Just take like a, what is this? A cobalt blue, any kind of blue, any even ultramarine will work here. And you just kind of put in a loose little water line there. Show where that surface of the water really is at. You can even do it on some of these rocks. You can kind of put that in loose. Okay. Now I'm going to work right here and I'm going to create a little bit of land right there. So Let's move these pastels because these guys are in the way. Let's move uh, those guys. Okay. All right. And um, let's see. Let's see how I'm going to do this. So there's some land that's a shore that's right here, right in front. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of grays and browns, try to create a layer on top of this deep water color here. And I'm going to do some big rocks right up here in the front. Okay, a couple of big rocks, maybe one right there. Big rock here. You see what the rocks are? These, these rounded mounds, basically. Maybe one to picking up right here. Okay, little rocks here and there. Let's give these rocks a little bit more of a definition. So we'll add a dark area of the rock, the shaded part, I guess. All right. And then we'll add a highlight because we have the sun that's hitting it. So it's going to light it up a little bit. I'll be on the right side where that light light comes here. Okay, a little bit of highlight. And let's get a dark in there. We need a darker dark. So I'm going to go with the black. Try to sit these rocks down into the water. So we're going to do a little bit of black behind it, kind of a shadow. Kind of helps sit it down a little bit. And then um, in front, there's a little reflection of these rocks in the water. Some of these. Okay. So roughly that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then uh, we'll put in some rocks that maybe are just right underneath the surface of the water. They haven't really actually breached the surface, but they're just right there. You can really see them. 
right? So we'll kind of smear in the same kind of brown, but what I do is I take a finger and I kind of smear smudge it. Okay. Like that, just kind of certain spots there where the water is a little shallow here and you're able to see the bottom of the river bed there. Okay. And uh, what we do is we just kind of change the value just kind of by taking a finger over. We can even take a little blue, lightly go over there, just kind of push those values down into the water so that they feel like they're just underneath the surface of that water. Okay, and then we can take a blue, this cobalt, and then we can very lightly do some rippling of the water, a light um, indication of some reflection, some sky reflection. And I just kind of put that right over the top very light, so I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just kind of gliding it right over the top of these, of the surface already, because I don't want to mix. I don't want to mix the blue in. I just want it to sit on top to try to get more of a uh, water sheen, you know, the kind of a shiny sheen part of water. So you kind of put a blue and use the texture of the paper. create an illusion it's really all these things are is an illusion of water all right so you got to play around with that just how much pressure you're putting down really determines that look so we have this little rock now let's put some let's put some grass maybe there's some grass some plants here so i'm going to take a really light green and just kind of do some vertical marks here. This is a really light green, so I'm going to have to go with something a little bit deeper. But we'll do a little bit of this. Okay. And then um, maybe a brighter green like this one I was using back here. Let's see if this will work. Got to clean it off first. Yeah, it's hard to get, really get anything to sit on top of that. So we might scratch that idea. Can't really get anything to sit. Let's try this green, see if it'll work a little better, a little better, a little bit softer than that other green, but not really what I'm looking for. So we'll scratch that idea. I was trying to get some of plants here but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get much much more to sit on top. I'm gonna to have to, I would have to use a workable fixative here if I want to get additional layers. There's just so much going here that I can't really lay my greens on top. So I don't really want to use a workable fixative. I tend to just try to keep it try to do the layers without it. But I think it work, works okay. I think it looks good enough. Um, question is, can I put a big tree here? So we have this tree going in front and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing in some branches. Okay. So this tree, right, let's use a brown actually for the trunk and the branches. It's got these branches that um, come out. We'll put some foliage on it. We'll put some leaves on there. Okay, just kind of random, put some branches in. You don't even really have to connect. They just have to be there. Okay, it's hard to see that on top of that green, but it'll show up. All right, now we're gonna take some green and we're gonna to have to try to build on top and this is gonna be hard because I got a lot of layers here going. So we'll start with this grandma green and drop some leaves here. Okay, and I 
actually want to go up up into the sky and overlap part of that mountain that color to sit down on the surface rather than slide around. So this is the first I've used these Paul Rubens and I do like them. I do like them. Um, you know it's my first time using them so maybe I just need a little bit more more experience with them. They remind me a lot of um, Neo Pastels, kind of a cross between Neo Pastels and Sens. Like I don't feel they're as soft as the Sens. I feel the Sens are softer. So I think they're somewhere in between Sennelliers and then my Neo Pastels, for the most part. Okay, finish this tree. I just kind of kind of want to cover this little section here with this green. It's not really going to show up here, but let's see. So it's real thick. It's getting a real thick in this area. So try to create a tree over here. A different green to it. Let's go with. Um, it's going to be one of these. I mean, I don't have a lot of choices here, so I'm going to have to see what I can do with this guy, with these guys. Maybe I'll bring. Where's that medium green? Where'd you go? I was trying to find this one. It's like I couldn't find it. It was, it was hiding for me. All right, so we're gonna bring up some highlights to this. What I'm doing is I'm just striking that paper and I'm putting pressure down and I leave a mark, okay? And I kind of spread that around. And when it gets to be too slick like it just did, then I wipe the stick and do it again. Okay, so it gets too slick, wipe the stick, drop more down. All right. And I actually want to try something here just to see how soft you can see this area is really slick and it gets difficult to get that layer down to get that color to sit down but I want to try something I know I said I wasn't going to use any sends but I just want to try a little experiment um, so this is a Sun almost the same color very close let's just do a little quick little comparison between the softness of these two, okay? Sennelier and Paul Rubin, all right? So here is a Paul Rubin, okay? And I have to put down a little bit of moderate pressure to get that color to sit down, 
to sit there like that. Okay. Light marks ain't going to work. I have to actually push in to drop that color. Now let's try the same thing with this send green. Let's see how much pressure I need to put down to get a color down. And I don't. It's very easy with the send. It's so easy. I can literally just barely dab, barely dab, and I can get that mark to sit. Whereas if I do the same with this uh, Paul Rubin, okay, it doesn't work like that. Okay, I have to actually push to get the mark down. Okay, so that tells me, just this little test, that tells me that this scent is just softer. It's so easy just to put it right on top. Okay. So, and I suspect that, I just wanted to prove it or show you guys that definitely Center Liers is the softest oil pastel I have used. Softer than these Paul Rubens. These feel pretty soft. And then when you first touch and hold them, you're thinking, mm, it's very similar to Sun Layer. But when I actually go into use and see when I actually go and try to layer my usual techniques of layer, I'm having this problem right here where it's hard for me to get a color to sit down. All right. Anyway, just a little bit of a test experiment there. it helps to have different brands to make your life easier when you want to do certain effects like I was just trying to do. See, this is really difficult to get that color to sit. Imagine this with my finger a little bit. Gosh, just doesn't want to, I just doesn't want to put color down. I have to literally just like bite into the oil pastel stick to actually get that deposit. Almost like a twist. Okay, and wipe and do it again. Now I'm running out of, uh, let me clean some of this paper off. So as I'm working this, and you know, this set was only $25.99 for 48 colors. That's pretty amazing. I'm wondering though, can I get open stock? Can I just buy single sticks? Do I have to buy a whole set when I run out of one color? Right? Because that's important for me. I mean, I all my works 100%, not 100% oil pastel, but all my paintings are are finished off with oil pastel. Right, so I can run out of sticks very fast. And so for me, the ability to replace these is gonna be what keeps me from buying them or not buying them. If I can't get open stock Ruben, Paul Rubens, probably not gonna use this brand all that often, right? Because I don't wanna have to buy a new set, a new 48 count set or a, tw or, or a 12 count set if I just wanna replace, you know, one stick. I gotta be able to buy that one stick. 
So I'm going to go online and I'm going to see if it's possible to buy OpenStock Paul Rubens. And if it is, then I'll probably keep using it. If not, then I'm not going to really use the Paul Rubens that much. I'll probably incorporate it just within my set. Like I might pull this green out and use it for stuff. But i got to be able to replace open stock and be able to buy single set, single, single sticks. Okay, so let's put um, a little bit of black on these branches to... Just bring them out a little bit more, make that darker, make it a little bit more noticeable. Kind of pulls it forward too. Okay, I think I need to bring a little bit more, more of a highlight to this tree. So I'm going to see if I can drop this strong green right on some of these leaves just to try to pull it towards us. So I feel like it's trying to sit back and mix in to the back a little bit. So let's bring this tree a little forward here. And we're getting close to done. I know this is kind of the last parts of this painting, so I know we're getting close to the finish line. Oh, this one's getting really dirty. I need a new, um, need a new wipey. As uh, these sticks are getting dirty real quick, I'm trying to layer on top of a very thick layer already. And then another test I'm going to do, and this will be a separate video, is we're going to test the light fast of these Paul Rubens. I want to see just how long the color will stay strong. Does it fade over time? How much does it fade? All right, so we're going to do a light fast test. That's going to be a separate video. I'm actually going to test all of my oil pastels, all the brands, and we're going to put them to the test. And... Um, We'll do it maybe after two or three months and see what it looks like. All right, so that video is coming. I just have to order some more supplies. I got to get some more Van Goghs, and so I have some fresh sticks of each of the brands I use. And then I'll make that video probably here pretty soon, within a couple weeks. And then uh, we'll make a follow-up video to that light fast, light fast test in a few months, and we'll kind of see the results of that. So that'll be interesting. And we'll find out, does these oil pastels actually fade? Will the color actually fade from them? And uh, we'll, we'll test each brand and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to bring a little bit more light to this tree here. All right, I want to leave some of the dark in there too. It helps uh, give it some dimension. But some of these are getting a light. Pretty much almost there, guys. We got final marks here, and then we'll we'll play around and see what else we can do with this. But we're pretty much there. 
I'm gonna do a little stump and kind of kind of push these greens back because it's, it's the same green as this and so I kind of want to push these back change the value slightly so these are a little bit darker than this it's so cool with the oil pastel you can just simply put your finger on it and change the the value of that color so easily just a smudge of the finger will do it all right some leaves kind of coming out further all right yeah that looks good looks pretty good i think we're getting close here i could keep playing and keep poking but uh you know, sometimes you gotta be done. All right. All right. Let's, um, Kind of cleaning things up here, but I want to take a look at these. Uh, this cliff here. I have a little bit of this brown that I don't really want to see up there, so I'm going to kind of smear that. Let's pick that. Um, let's see some of these blues. I forgot which one I was using up here. I think a French ultramarine. Let's just kind of put a little bit up here. a little bit okay and then where is that light gray here it is looks like a white but it is a very light gray See, this is a stick that I would be replacing a lot because it's got a lot of uses. It's a good highlight color. It's a good mountain color. It can be used for water, for rocks. So this would get a lot of use. I would have to replace this quite a bit, and uh, I would have to buy a whole new set if they don't offer open stock, which is not cool. Let's see what the white does. So here is that light gray. Here's the white. Let's, how white is it? It should be significantly brighter on top of that. Kind of a highlight. All right, guys. I think I am. I think I'm done. There's Yosemite for you. Water looks pretty good. Let's take a look. Not bad. I really like the mountains um, and the, that tree line right there. Just how those recede back. The values of that is, uh, is actually really good. Mountains are tricky because they're majestic and so they have to look majestic but they have to also sit like they're far away. So that can be a little tricky sometimes to try to make it look like a majestic mountain but the to keep the values correct so that the mountain looks like it sits back all right and i think i, I think i achieved that 
here's the water. You can see close ups and trying to get that underwater rock effect there. You can see that cobalt blue. I, I, I lightly scrubbed it over the top of that. You can see that there. That really helps with that water look. And then a couple different blues here. And then the rocks, you can see this reflection of the rocks and the shadow of the rocks. Okay. All right, let's sign it and then uh, we'll call it good. So I like to sign it in red. And uh, so let's use the red stick. It's rose red. Let's do that. And where should we put the signature? I usually like to put it in one of these corners here. So maybe we'll put it in this corner. All right. Anyways, this has been fun for me. Um, I like the Paul Rubens. They're fun to play with. I don't know if I'm going to incorporate them into um, my set, but I do like playing with them. They're fun to create with. This red doesn't want to sit on top. Um, Oops. There we go. Kinda. Kind of an RA. And there's the thumbprint. Yeah, these Rubens are fun. Um, softness wise, definitely the Snelliers are softer. I would say that these Paul Rubens fall in between a Neo Pastel and a Snellier. And I think they're a little bit closer to Neo Pastel as far as their softness goes. You can see on that test how easy it was to put that scent on top, whereas with these Paul Rubens, I had to really press in, kind of flick up and twist to get the color to deposit down. So it tells you right there that the scents are softer. Um, but these are nice. These Paul Rubens are nice here. So I used all these uh, sticks here for this scene. Pretty much used all the greens except for one. A lot of the browns and got used. The size of the stick is really nice. The actual thickness of it, how much they give you is nice. The price you can't beat. I mean, twenty five ninety nine for a artist quality set of oil pastels, and I would consider these artist quality. They are soft enough. Um, and with a set of maybe Crepaz Expressionists to go along with these, I bet these would be just perfect for for that i would probably add in some sends like a sen white and a 007 um, and maybe a light gray sennelier but other than that you can probably do be fine with just that and maybe some harder oil pastels to help you um, stack up the colors and get those layers going so okay everybody thanks for watching i know these are long videos and uh, i know these don't get a lot of views because um you know they're long videos and um, people like the shorter videos, like around the 10 or 15 minute, those seem to get the longer views. And But I think it's important to do to see uh, oil pastel in real time and to see how it really works rather than to see it at a time lapse, because I don't really think you learn from time lapse. I think you actually learn from from something like this, at least that's how I'm thinking. So hopefully this is helpful. and. And um, appreciate you guys watching and um, your comments and your questions. Uh, I really appreciate that. So, all right. Have a great day, everybody.